afternoon to greet you with Jesus' joy. And I want to know, is there anybody in here thirsty? To pastor and co-pastor, and I thank them for this assignment to all the ministers and to everyone under the sound of my voice. Is there anybody in here that was thirsting for the wrong things in life and it didn't quench your thirst? Maybe it was the job that you thought you wanted and you got the job and that didn't quench your thirst. Maybe it was some material things that you were thirsting for, and when you got the material things, that didn't quench your thirst. Or maybe it was a man that you was going after, or a woman that you was going after, or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, or just someone that you needed, you thought you needed in your life, and that didn't quench. Your thirst. Can I ask you a question? Thank you. Have you tried Jesus? I mean, really tried Jesus? The only one that can quench your thirst? The only one that can heal your broken heart and mend your marriages and mend your family. He's the only one that can set you free, deliver you from the things of the world. Even some of you might have went back to former elements, that, but, 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 but that still didn't quench well, your thirst. Well. So in the book of John. Chapter 4, you don't have to stand. I I just want to read this to you. John chapter 4, verses 5 through 15. But before I I, I read it, let me just give you an application which says about the woman of Samaria. Apparently in order... To talk to this woman, which we're going to read about. Jesus deliberately took this route through Samaria to Samaria to get to Galilee, even though normally the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. He knew her need. Glory to God. Jesus knew the woman's need. And that need was for her to be delivered and set free from the sins that she was committed into. And that other people of the region and must needs to go through Samaritan. And so doing, he was leaving us an example that we, talking about the church, should follow his steps, both of personal soul winning and of rejecting ethnic prejudice. He had to go through Samaritan. Yeah. So listen to the word. Then come of he to the city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near the parcel of the ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being weary with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Let me put a finger right there for a minute. I read throughout all the Gospels, Matthews, Mark, Luke, and John, but I never seen or read Where Jesus sat and waited for somebody. Normally Jesus would travel from town to town and from house to house 
delivering and setting people free. But you see here, Jesus is sitting here waiting, knowing that this woman was coming to the well so that he can set her free. Are y'all getting this? He waited, and maybe it's somebody in here. He's been waiting for you to come to him so that you can get your total freedom from him, your total deliverance from him. Anything that you need, it's coming from Jesus. He's waiting on you, just like he was waiting on me to get to this point. Amen. Verse 7 goes on to say, there cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. And here's the conversation that goes on with Jesus and the woman. Jesus says unto her, give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, axest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, hallelujah, and who it is that saith unto thee, Give me to drink. Thou would have have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw. Let me put my finger right there for a minute. Something I just seen. It kind of sounds like she was being a little sarcastic with Jesus. Because... She didn't understand. Well, she thought this was some ordinary man, but didn't know this was Jesus. And and, and she's saying unto him, you don't have nothing to draw with. You're not getting mine and you're not going to sit out of mine. So how are you going to draw from this water? Jesus answered and said unto her. Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But, somebody say but. But. Whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him. See, y'all got to get this. It says the water that I shall give of him shall be in him a well of water springing up. Unto everlasting life. The woman said unto her, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Amen. Matthews chapter 5. In verse 6 says, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You're going to hear that at the end of the message. Amen. For a thought this morning, a thirst for Jesus. A thirst for Jesus. Let us pray. Father, we come in the blessed name of Jesus, God, to thank you for this assignment, God, and pray now that you will hide me behind the cross, that they won't see me, God, but they will see Christ standing here preaching your gospel. Your word says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of your mouth. So as I stand, Father, I pray that you proceed. If there's any man or woman, boy or girl in this audience, God, that's thirsting for anything, Father, I pray that they come thirsting for you, God. 
knowing, God, that we're living in such a time where people are thirsting for the things of the world more than thirsting for you. And I pray, God, that this thirst, God, would be a spiritual thirst, God, that living water in us, God, that we'll never thirst for things. Although we need all these things in the world to survive, but let our thirst be more of you and not of the world. In Jesus' name, amen. A thirst for Jesus. I remember watching the Olympics, and my favorite event was the track and field and the marathon. Being a former runner and long walker, that was my favorite event. But the marathon, marathon, as I noticed, the people on the sideline were holding cups of water. And as the runners were passing by, some of the runners would take a cup and pour it over their heads. And others would take the cup and drink it just to quench their thirst. Hebrews, my brothers and sisters, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2 says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, looking, excuse me, and let us run with patience, can't miss that part, the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and then he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. You see, this race, my brothers and sisters, is a race of faith, that is described in three modifying statements. Number one, it is to be run by laying aside every weight. And this refers to impediments that weigh us down, such as clothing and excessive body weight. Although they are not inherently wrong, but for a diligent runner or a faithful Christian, they must be removed. Amen? The second thing is um, to be run by putting off the entangling sin. And third, it is to be run with patience. And patience, my brothers and sisters, is better translated as endurance. For Matthew 24 and 23 says, But he that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. Amen? You see, Jesus is known throughout the Bible as being omniscient. That is, he is all-knowing, all-seeing, and he is all-wise. He is also omnipotent. He's all-powerful. And he's also omnipresent, or we can call him Jehovah Shammah, the Lord is present. Jesus is in all places at all times, and a songwriter says, he's our refuge, he's our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And because I believe that Jesus is omnipotent, there has never been a question that Jesus has never asked. That he didn't already answer. And this is fact. There has never been anything Jesus needed he couldn't provide for himself. Amen? And Jesus said, I am complete. And we are complete in him. Letting me know he's complete and lacking nothing. David, listen to this. David saw him as his light. And his salvation. And even though David knew he had some enemies 
and some foes, David was confident knowing he had God. His enemies were defeated and David felt complete within himself. Amen? Now, now, I'm talking about Jesus, the one that we serve. The one that we worship. The one that can do anything but fail. The water walking Jesus who heals the sick and raises the dead. Who turn water into wine. I'm talking about he's immutable. Who can do anything, reach anybody, turn anything around, doesn't need to seek you for help, for counseling, or for guidance. I'm talking about Jesus, for all power and authority is in his hand. Jesus is lacking nothing. And that's why it bothers me, listen to this, to see him sitting at the well waiting for a cheap, Yes, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. Cheap, carnal, low down, dirty shame, broken, and multi married woman to come down to the well to give him anything. Multi-married woman. What could she actually give Jesus when he already has everything? You see, Jesus perhaps was holding up healing more sick just to sit by the well for several hours waiting for the woman just to come back. And when she gets, when he gets to this woman, when she arrives at the well, she already had five husbands and was shacking up with one. Jesus sits there after waiting all this time and asks her, give me a drink. Let me put my finger right there. Do you really think Jesus was... Physically thirsty? Read the story, you'll find out. Jesus was not physically thirsty. He was thirsty for the woman to get her healed from the sins that she was into. I already said it. She had five husbands. And the one she was... The one she was living with, shocking up with, Jesus said, when you read all, I didn't read it all the way down. Shacking up, y'all. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus healed beggars. Jesus opened blind eyes. Jesus loosed the bomb. But here we see Jesus asking a woman who has made, who has, excuse me, more dysfunctions than it would take for me to finish this message. But what is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visited him? If Jesus can visit a woman with all those problems, do you know he will visit you with yours well. and deliver and set you free from yours? Well. Sometimes Jesus will sit right in our congregation and wait for the right time for someone to come to him. And that time might be when 
The message is finished and we open the doors to the church and the windows of heaven for somebody to get saved. But then it might be a time during the course of the service that Jesus was sitting right in our audience and he has done it many a times. Sat here and waited for somebody and you'll see somebody in the audience crying out to the Lord because they're in the need of something. You'll see somebody sitting in the audience crying or even sitting up here on a pulpit crying Because they're in need of Jesus and we know that Jesus is the only one that can heal us of diseases. He's the only one that can heal the pain in our body. He's the only one that can regulate our minds and heal us from anything in this world. Jesus will sit right here and just wait for you to come to him. Can I ask you another question? Do you really think Jesus needed or need what we have? Well, Listen, we bring our tithes and offerings and place them in the basket. But do you really think if we did, we didn't bring it, that Jesus would be broke? Do you think Jesus needed or need us to preach and teach anything or sing anything for him? What can we give him that he already already has? Praise, worship, service, and honor all belong to him. Amen? Amen. So, so Jesus is sitting at the well when she arrives. Listen, she's not bringing water to the well. Huh? The water was already there to be drawn. Well. And before she could enter into relationship with him, religion and traditions had to be removed. She couldn't even answer Jesus' question before she began to say, you know, the Jews and the Samaritans, they don't mingle. In other words, we don't get along. We don't like each other. Is there anybody in here that can attest to that? Because there are some people, and even in our own families, that we don't even get along with, but yet they need Jesus. There are some people on our jobs that we don't like our bosses. We don't like people on our jobs that we just don't get along with, but yet we are the examples. They need Jesus. There are some people in our communities that don't even know about Jesus, but yet if we give them some of this water... Everybody's a a candidate for the kingdom of God, regardless to their situation. That's why Jesus needed to go through Samaritan to get to this well, because he knew the situation of the woman. Do you know and understand the situation of what's going on in this world that we got to sometimes get out the box and go out there among the world and let them know that the wage of sin is still death, but the gift of God is eternal life? Best yet, my brothers and sisters, this woman was getting ready to miss the encounter with Jesus. I don't know who I'm ministering to, but don't y'all miss it today. Somebody might be getting ready to get an encounter with Jesus that you've been waiting for for a long time. She was getting ready to miss it and making comments, silly comments, and you ain't got nothing to draw with, and we don't mingle with each other and all this. But she did not understand that she was in the presence of the Lord. And when you're in the presence of the Lord, it's the time for you to get your blessings. Amen? You see, I'd rather work with raw sinners than self-righteous religion folk that don't have the attitude to go out and win souls or to think that they better 
than the ones out in the world because you got a little taste of Jesus because you read in the word. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is them that trust in him. You got a taste of Jesus. Now you don't want to go out and tell somebody about the same man that saved your soul, the same man that picked you up and turned you around. The Bible says, I think we said this in Sunday school, all have sinned and come short to the glory of God. Not y'all. So I'd rather work with raw sinners than with self-righteous folk. I mean drug dealers, people living out there on the streets and help clean them up than deal, than to deal with people with religious ideas and circumvent an opportunity to ha- then and have an opportunity to have an encounter with Jesus. You see, the devil, and I, I don't mind saying this word because he's already a defeated foe. The devil, the enemy, would try anything to cause a distraction or to have you blindsided by Jesus' actual presence. Well, Hallelujah. And the reason is uh, he doesn't want black backsliders returning to the Lord. He doesn't want sinners saved, delivered, and set free from the sins of this world. Glory be to God. So this woman, she didn't understand the privilege of having this or even recognizing that she was in the presence of the Lord. And I honestly wish we had Jesus right now in this presence with all the chaos going on in this world. I believe if Jesus was right here, it wouldn't be so crazy. Children wouldn't be so out of control. Marriages would stay the same and stay together for years and years and uh, homes would won't be broken and schools would be uh, uh, will have all the money in the world so that they can educate our children and not have them running in the streets. And but it is written, "Blessed are they that have not seen but yet believe." Amen. And Jesus was trying to get this woman saved, delivered, and set free from her sin. I did not come here just to talk about the woman at the well who really wants to deal with her anyway. Isn't that our attitude? She's nameless. She's wild. She's dysfunctional. It's not really the story, but but listen, she's the canvas on which the story is painted. Because Jesus is really the story. The woman is the canvas whereby you'll see his glory getting in to her. Hallelujah. So listen to this. I got so thirsty one day. My mouth was so dry, I thought I had some type of disease. My mouth was dry. Let me put a finger right there. I was walking from the airport. And, no, 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 let me give you this one. I was walking from Bethlehem Pike to northeast, 95 degrees. Had a lot on my mind, and I normally would walk for a long, long walk. I walked from the airport to Logan one day, just walking, and and this particular time, Ashley dropped me off at my doctor's office on Bethlehem Pipe, and I said, you know what, I'm going to take the back road, Church Street, all the way over up these hills, and I'm going to make it back to uh, Northeast, and I got halfway through, and I'm looking at my water, and it was like a quarter left. And I'm sipping like, man, I'm thirsty. It's hot out here. Lord, I shouldn't have done this. I should have just said, Ashley, come back and pick me up when you finish. But I'm walking, and and I'm getting dehydrated. And I'm trying to sip, and I'm like, God, ain't no shade nowhere. If I can just make it up the hill, I believe some trees over here. I could just sit there, and I'm going to call Ashley. 
and say, baby, hurry up and come get daddy because I feel like I'm going to faint. And I'm walking and all of a sudden the water's getting hot. And I'm like, I feel like I'm faint. I'm walking up and I, oh, God, help me, please. So I get up the hill. I call Ashley. I say, baby, I'm on church road, please. I'm over by this, um, this, school, um, this school over here. I said, uh, hurry up and come and get me. I took, I almost give me, take my shirt off. I said, nah, Lord, I, it's too hot for that. And uh, so as I got to the shade, I'm going to tell you how good God is. Somehow he cooled my water off. And I was able to drink the, um, you know, sip until Ashley came. Lord, thank God for my daughter because when she came, I think I drunk two straight, ate a banana, started praising the Lord. Thank you, Lord, because I was thirsty. It was just out of the blue. And and you know how the enemy is always trying to make you think that something is wrong. Oh, somebody knows what I'm talking about. And and you're just walking around and all of a sudden you feel pain in your hip. And the devil says, oh, that's cancer. Your stomach starts hurting. Oh, you got ulcers. You got thirsty and he says, that's diabetes. But come to find out, all along you were just thirsty. The kind of thirst that you just want some water. You see, put my finger right there. Mountain Dew won't do. I like that. Coke, when you're you're dehydrated, is a joke. Sprite ain't right. Huh? Canada Dry? Y'all figure that one out. Pastor said Canada Dry won't fly. But even water in this kind of thirst won't help. Water is the cheapest thing that you can buy, except for Fiji. I'm going to say that. They they call it Fiji. It's Fiji. I don't care what y'all say. It's it's spelled Fiji. F-I-G-I. Most expensive water you can buy. Have you ever had this kind of thirst that just required water and said, if I can just have some water, and you know it's cheaper than all the other stuff on that table, but all I need is some water. Even Jesus himself stopped while dying on the cross and says, I thirst. And to think that Jesus will be thirsty and and, and they got some hyssop and vinegar and they dipped it in and, and they tried to quench Jesus' thirst. And, 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 and his thirst was a carnal apparatus. Uh, and can you imagine how Jesus felt knowing that not that was not what he really wanted? You see, Jesus was thirsting for the souls of the entire world, but we're thirsting and and, and we're thirsting and we're thirsting and thirsting and thirsting for the wrong things. You see, religion uh, uh, has painted the picture having people believing that you can have all the degrees than a thermometer. You can have all the material things, big house on the hill, drive the most fanciest car, not help someone uh, or somebody along the way, as the writer says, uh, if I can just help somebody along the way, then my living will not be in vain. Am I right about this? Uh, If I can just help somebody, if I can just bless somebody, if I can just tell somebody that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, then my living won't be in vain. Amen? 
You see, none of his disciples could quench Jesus' thirst because he had sent them away. Then told a sinful woman to whom he waited on, can I confide with you? Honey, I'm thirsty. Jesus says to her, I know you're used to satisfying men and their needs. But can I tell you what I really want? I'm thirsty. Sometimes the most unlikely people have what Jesus really wants. I mean, people who messed up, fouled up, screwed up, who blew up, cracked up, been around the block 12 and, and 50, 11 times, people who are humble enough to open themselves up can do more for Jesus than any self-righteous man or woman put together. Excuse me, y'all, I'm a little thirsty. <laughs> Jesus told this Samaritan woman, I thirst. Then she hits him with her silly, petty, religious, sociological barriers then and, and then Jesus says, if you knew who it was that asked you for drink, you would have asked me for living water. Now check this out. Jesus has asked her for something he already is. Not that he already has. But he asked her for something he already is. And Jesus is saying to you and I, I am your bread when you're hungry. I am your water when you're thirsty. I am your joy in place of sorrow. I am your hope for tomorrow. I am your peace in the midst of a storm. I am your bridge over troubled waters. I am your wonderful counselor. I am the almighty God. I am the prince of peace. I am your everlasting father. Jesus said, I am the lily of the valley. Jesus said, I am your bright and morning star. Jesus says, I am everything you need. Just put all your trust in me. You see, Jesus knows that our life was a little jacked up because we were thirsting for the wrong things. You see, what Jesus is telling us that he will ask you for something that I have in order for me to be in you. Uh, I hope y'all got that. Jesus says, I'm going to say it again. He will ask you for something that we have for him to be in us. He said, I will call you to be an apostle. Knowing your life was jacked up. Then be the apostle in you so that you can go and preach and heal people along the way. He said, I'm calling you to be a healer. Then I'm going to be the healer inside of you so that you can go touch someone and they shall recover. Jesus says, I'll ask you to tithe knowing you don't have a job. Then I give you the job so that you can come become a tither. 
I'll ask you for water, then I'll be the living water inside of you because I am Jesus and without me ye can do no things. I don't know who this is for, but Jesus has asked somebody for something and you're saying, thank you. Oh, Lord, I don't have it. And it's good when Jesus asks you for something you don't have. Because that means he's going to be in you what he has asked you for. Are y'all with me? Jesus is also saying, I'm trying to deliver you from going to natural places for spiritual needs. And believe it or not, if you'll be upset with some of the people you know going to natural places for spiritual needs. I don't have to name them. Y'all know what I'm talking about. They know they are in need of something, but they're going to natural places to fulfill their spiritual needs. What am I saying? Uh, they think that they need a drink, so they go to the bar. They think that they need a hit, so they go to the drug dealer to try to get a hit. They think that they need the man or the woman, and they think that they need more money. But all along, Jesus is saying, all you need is me. And some people think that getting a bigger house and keeping up with the Joneses, is what they need. But Jesus said, if you keep drinking from the water you have, you will thirst again, again, and again. But, if you stop going to natural places to quench a spiritual need, I will give you spiritual water. And Jesus says, and you will never, ever thirst again. I'm almost, I'm almost ready to close, y'all. But this never thirst again is bought about through a relationship between you and Jesus. Quenches, quench his thirst, quenches your thirst. All right. Meeting his need meets your needs. Giving to him is giving to yourself. Bless God. Bless God. When you bless Jesus, Come on. he'll bless you back. When you give to him what you have, He'll give to you what he has in abundance. Good measure. Pressing down. Shaking together. Will God give to you? When Jesus put the living water in you, you will never thirst again. But remember this. Remember, remember I read Matthew 6, excuse me, 5 and 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Well, do you know that all the time, listen to this clearly, Jesus and the Samaritan woman never drank the water? But yet both of them, both of them were filled? And blessed spiritually. And what she had, Jesus was the only one 
she needed. Not the five husbands. Not the one she was shacking up with. But the moral of the story really is our God and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is long suffering. And they are waiting for us to come to him. No matter what the problem is or the situation, just come to Jesus just as you are. You may be wounded, weary, or sad. Pastor said in his message last Sunday, come to Jesus. Matthews 8, 11, 28, 20 through 30 says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn, this is the key, learn of Jesus, learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke are easy. Y'all hear that? Jesus said, my yoke are easy, but my burdens are light. Can I ask you a question as everyone stands to their feet? What? are you thirsting for?